Alrighty guys, so how's it going today? So we got done doing the uh, review on the uh, that Dremel tool uh, from Harvard Freight. Now we're going to do the second order from second tool I ordered from Harvard Freight. Um, but before I I went I went in to have my brief warm up. I'm still a little cold, but my hands are doing better now. I went and called my local K size dealer dealer because I got to order a part. Sixty-six dollars for the that damn uh, oil pressure sender unit that I had to order. So I ordered that just now. Uh, Sixty-six dollars, not too bad, I guess. Um, so yeah, so now we're gonna get into this review of the contact contact whatever multimeter. This is a uh, eleven function digital with audio continuity Ugh. part number of this is 61593 they had bigger ones but I figured this should be more than enough it's even got a battery so keeping it here in the cold was a bad idea um, they, they even got the part number of the unit actually on the unit itself so if you should ever damage this or something you could just go to your old one and there it is so now to open these things are a tricky little SOB. And this comes from all the way from California. My order actually came from California. I guess it depends on who actually has your stuff. So as long as my stuff don't come from China, like actually physically from China, then I'm okay with it because it, uh, it's talking like a month. I know my mom's got something coming. And they custom make them but it's being custom made in China so it's gonna take forever to get here we're already like into our second week now of waiting around for it it's for my mother anyway so I don't really care but so just give her hail just give her okay there you go Okay, well, we're not going to need that anymore. That just says the name of the, of the thing. And now you should just be able to somehow just probably, probably just slide it out. Let's just try that. Yeah, we can do that. Now that's the back of it. <laughs> so you're pretty much all greeted with sharp corners. That's great. Okay. Now we're going to get cut in the meanwhile. I don't know if this scissor will cut through this. I guess it will. It's a little hard though. It is open enough so we can get some of the stuff out. Because I'm not going to need the case anyway. There we go. That should, should be good enough. So, if you open it from the back side, you're greeted with an owner's manual. The book tells you how to use it and not kill yourself. Uh, and then you're greeted with whatever you decide to grab next. For me, I'm going to grab the leads. Okay, the wires. Uh, and of course, the ends have their own little caps on them, so that's actually kind of nice. Obviously, to protect them for during transport. And this is something I don't. I'm. I'm not going to probably need. But this has a uh, a temperature wire, so you can read the temperature of something. I suppose like I don't know, whatever you plan on checking the temperature of. I suppose like water, oil, whatever. But the problem with this is that it only reads in Celsius. That I don't like. I wish there was a Fahrenheit side to that, but there's not. There's only a, only a Fahrenheit or a Celsius. And then you're greeted with the battery. That's the battery, right there. Um, it's wrapped up too, so it's a, it's a nine volt, extra heavy duty. So you can you can replace these with this ordinary uh, Duracell um, nine volt batteries like these. 
So you don't need to use special ones. You can just use whatever you happen to have laying around or whatever you can afford. If you can afford the more expensive ones, I'd probably go with them. Just so, uh, of course, you can't freaking open the stupid thing. You know, just so you probably should get extra life out of it and whatnot. Now, if you're going to use them a lot, expensive batteries probably wouldn't be the way to go because they're going to die on you fairly quickly anyway. So a cheaper one would be better, like a Daracell or something. Or, ah, of course, it's sticking to me. And then you're greeted with the machine. Ah, come on out there. Alright, so there's the machine. Now this we don't need because my garbage is getting full in here in the shop. I didn't even make it in the damn trash. The trash is so small. Okay. So, this unit, oh, can't even fit it in the viewfinder. I guess you guys can see what kind of phone I'm using. Samsung Galaxy S7 Active, by the way. Gotta get a new one, though. I kind of damaged this one already. Uh, yeah, it's got it's got the on-off switch, a hold, which I believe it, it it's like a memory for the last time, for the last thing that you checked. It's got your, uh, looks like your wire holders for your negative and positives. And this is like a rubber, a stiff rubber now, boot that you can remove to change the battery. And yes, I can also point that the screen is supposed to, yeah, it's supposed to be an angled one, which I'm probably not really going to use all that much, but it's there if I do need it. So now to get the boot out, there we go. Oh, they kind of almost almost like glued that in place. That's actually kind of interesting. So mine's actually coming apart right here, which I don't like that. See that? I don't I don't think that's where the battery goes. It goes in here. And you need a tiny little screwdriver, and I don't even have anything that damn tiny. I have one in the house, but not here in the shop. So maybe this will do. Okay, this will do. You probably don't need the screw. Like once you, you know, especially if you're going to swap up batteries all the time. You know, you probably could go without the screw. But I'm going to put it back in there, just for extra measure. And I'm not too sure how that's supposed to go in there, but okay. So I'm guessing just a little something like this. Something like that, I guess. So basically it looks like it just plugs in. And then you can kind of just throw it back in there. I'm assuming if we can get it back in there, that's the thing. It's not a very deep. If I would write, if I actually read the book, it'd probably tell me how to do this. But I'm an idiot and don't read books, so okay, yeah. So it, it just slips in there, good enough. Put your cover back on. And it's up to you if you want to put the screw back in, but I'm going to go ahead and do that because I don't plan on taking that, of course, that battery back out of it anytime soon. Unless it dies, then I'll have to, but just tighten it on up, I guess, if it's grabbing. There. Don't over tighten it. You don't have to do that. Eh, the cover's not on all the freaking weight. And where is that? No, no. That's stupid. What the hell? So I'm greeted with BS right out of the gate. They could have redesigned that a hell of a lot better. To actually fit. And it's supposed to. They would have done something I think a little bit more simpler. It would have been a lot better. There. Okay. Now it's in there. So, the pin will go ahead and put it right back in this boot. Uh, I probably should actually chest test it first. Yeah, it works. Okay. So, once you make sure it's in there all the way, let's go ahead and 
slide around back inside the boot. Whatever you want to call this. I don't think it's in there. It goes as far as it'll ever go. Okay. So, um, turn it on. It just says a one right now. So, like I said, this is the thermos thingy, which will actually would be interesting to use that just to see if it would read that, like the air temperature that's in here right now. I kind of doubt that would work, but it doesn't hurt to try it. So, and there's a little area right here where it says it's supposed to go. Come on. Okay. So there's a little probe. I'm just gonna I don't know which way this goes in. I don't think it really matters too much. Well maybe maybe it does, maybe it don't. Maybe it does matter. No, it does it does matter. So I'll turn it on, and then you want to go all the way over to temperature. Um, and it's actually is kind of little. It's actually pretty quick. So it's reading in Celsius. So you guys can do the calculations on how that would work. Right now I'm reading the Celsius temperature. There is no no uh fahrenheit but apparently it's about six six or seven celsius in here let's see if you touch something metal it's actually going down because the metal's colder so yeah well, the thermos does work. Um, like I said, I'm not going to use this because it's in Celsius. And if it ain't in Fahrenheit, it's kind of useless to me. I mean, I guess I could do the math to figure what it would be in Fahrenheit, but I shouldn't have to do that. I'm just saying, I'm mean, for the. They could have really made a Fahrenheit setting for that. Why would you even make a Celsius? For that you know it's like why is it just celsius why can't it be fahrenheit and celsius you know it's that hard to do so these are the the leads oh they actually state that that's interesting um since you're fighting with it just cut enough where you can rip it the rest of the way That works too. Okay. So we're not going to need any of this anymore. And this actually would have came in handy uh, about a week or two ago. This thing because I had a on off switch in my bathroom for the light kind of start. It was starting to quit. Um, it was starting to make even some, like some sparky sounds and stuff too. So luckily I had I went had went and bought one a while back. So I went and got a new switch put in. Cords are stiff because it's cold. Leads are decently long. I probably would like them a little longer than that, but eh, beggars can't be choosers. So now these are supposed to come off somehow. I'm not too sure. Oh, I guess just like that. Little cap. And this goes in the red. Something like that. And then you got the black. That's the negative side. Here we go. So that's how that's supposed to hook up. And you can move them too for di different things. But So let's turn this on. And now somebody was saying something about that. Now, when you turn them on and it reads all... Someone was actually making fun of this. Someone was saying that this was made by the devil because the 666 number pops up sometimes. And I just had that. I've seen a YouTube video on that. See, it, it just did it again, but there was a 1 in front of it. So... That was actually kind of kind of funny. 
And then there's caps on these things too. So, if I remember correctly, I wanted to see if Let's see here now. For me, it's not it's not beeping, but I might be under the wrong setting. Uh, it should actually be under that, and that's what should do it. These are not. Oh, they're in all the way though. I'm not getting a beeping, so. And I guess whatever it remembers, I guess somehow you can look back on that. Like I said, I gotta read the book though. So. Of course, this is AC. Still not, still not hearing a beep. Like I want to, but I don't know. Maybe the beep don't work for mine. The numbers work anyway, it's nice and clear. Ah, it's actually still reading temperature and it says that it's actually about 13 Celsius in here, so it must just be reading the temperature or what's ever around here. But yeah. Oh, there it goes. Beeps now. I guess as long as you use, you actually got to make sure that you're actually, whenever you're reading this, it has to be in these little, little groove areas. See, you can, maybe you can hear it beeping. I'll put it up by the phone. Let's see here. So yeah, it does work. So let's try. There's no current will go through this, but but yeah, that's kind of actually interesting. Yeah, so it works. So there you go. Um, I'll try to see if I can get the numbers to show up here for you guys, um, just so you guys can kind of see the numbers. Sure there's no glare. You can, you can hear it beeping and whatnot. So that's actually kind of nice. Um, if you can check your here, this is supposed to do AC and DC. So yeah, that's kind of that's kind of neat. This will definitely come in handy when I'm checking wiring on the 1586 or even in the house. It's 15 degrees, 15 Celsius here in the shop. So it's still reading, no matter if it's got it plugged in or not. I think it's just the you know air going into it. It feels that, I guess. So there we go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the caps back on these things. Something like that. Um, there you go. So that is the, uh, contact, contact, whatever, um, reading <laughs> multimeter. And, uh, that's actually kind of cool. I'm not too sure how this is supposed to work, but. 
Doesn't seem like that would fit, but eh, whatever. Oh, they bend out. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Ah, come on. Okay, so that's how that works then. My hands are frozen, so I can't really do much now. So this is going to be the end of this video. This video is longer than the last one, but it is what it is. That'd be kind of annoying to do all the time. So I guess something like that, pretty much. Something just fell off. What was that? I heard something fall. Did you guys see anything fall? I think I knew what. I think I know what fell. I'm missing this other black cap. This is a little red one. It's just for those things. I don't really need them anyway because I'm going to be leaving it plugged in all the time. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Sound like it fell over here though. Could have fell in the crack of the concrete. So I'm probably never going to find it now. But maybe I'll find it when I walk out. I don't know. So there's that neat little toy <laughs> or tool, however you want to say it, whatever. So oh, now it says 9999. That's creepy. But yeah, so it works. Um, this will come in handy for when I want to check wiring and whatnot. Um, I'm not an electrician, obviously, but that's for when I need to check wiring on, you know on a vehicle or something, I need to diagnose something, you know, real quick, like, uh, so, but yeah, I'm probably not going to use this thing, but I'll keep it anyway, just in case, you never know, I got some Celsius friends, and they want to know what something is in Celsius, and I can just tell them that, but, you know, for me, I want, would like it in Fahrenheit, oh, there's that other cat, right here, Okay, so I found that other cap. Oh, it was that little negative cap. Psst, dropped it again. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, great. So, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all it. Um, that's what I got. There's the book. I'll read the book. Um, so, I got me a uh, digital multimeter. And the one that the one that my uncle has, he's got a much older one. His, his wiring's actually kind of shot on it because I used it, um, but it was kind of shoddy. Um, the wire was thinner. Uh, it still had the digital readout, but it didn't have the, the that a little alarm for when you wanted to check the continuity or whatever. Um, but this does. This is this is what I liked about it is that it beeped. You heard a beep, then you know it was good. If you didn't hear a beep, then you knew it was junk. But my uncles didn't have that. So now, if I have a wiring issue with Big Red, or if the voltage should drop, like it does on the 1586, the battery on that son of a bitch is always dying. Um, well, it's not dying; it's, it gets weak. I always gotta charge it all the time, but it's. It's an old battery. It needs to be replaced. I'm not going to replace it till spring because I'm not really doing anything with it right now. I'm just fixing it up. So if I wanted to check the, the voltage on that battery, I can do it with this now. And not have to go steal my uncle's. For shits and giggles, we should have did that with Big Red's battery. That would be funny right here. <laughs> Actually, we're going to do that because I found Big Red's old battery. My hands are a little cold, so maybe well, I put it, put everything away now. But um, well, I guess that starts to run a little bit once you do do that. Um, whew, I'm getting a big whiff of diesel fuel. So let's turn this on. Nine nine nine. Okay, we're all going to hell. It probably was six six six, but it's upside down <laughs> to the devil. I guess I don't know. Whatever. A lot of people make fun of that, and I'm going to be one of them. So, the chances of going to hell are the same as trying to find Bigfoot. I made a video on that too. So let's see how Big Red's battery, old battery, is doing. Uh, 
if there's even anything left in this battery. Could be a little toast, you know. It actually like kind of like turned off. I don't think there's anything in this battery. I think she's done, boys. It should be. It's been sitting in here for two years, not hooked to nothing. Let's drop it down to 200, whatever that reading is. If it damages the battery, I'm not going to care because it's, it's. Yeah, pretty much it just acts like it turns off. And then it says a minus one there after a bit when I, when I let go. But we know it's good because it reads numbers. And this is the positive side, by the way. Eh, it just turns off because there's nothing in the battery for it to, for it to read. And let's try the. Uh, for shits and giggles. No, oh, wait a minute. I wasn't even on that. Okay, maybe now I am. Let's see here. Could you stab it inside? I don't think it matters. There was, nothing, there was stuff popping up, but now there's nothing popping up because it's, it's a much lower reading. Let's try the, uh, the continuity thingy just to see if the battery's even, like, say, still working. It probably won't work for this, obviously, but I don't know. It's fun to try stuff. Doesn't even get a ground. Now, if I did it to this. Come on, baby. It's not working at all now. Did you freeze? I think it froze. I think it froze. No, it's not frozen. <laughs> It'd be funny if it was frozen. It was beeping earlier. I don't know it's beeping. And yeah, it, again, it doesn't read nothing. It just, it just acts like it shuts off. So that's obviously telling you that there's nothing in this battery at all. So Big Red's old battery is definitely smoked. I just keep it because it's got the part number on it. But I think the new one had the part, the same part number on it as well. But this is the original from 2009 or 10. So, you know, you know how it is. So there you go, guys. The multimeter does work. You guys got to see a little bit of that in action. Um, put the caps back on. You probably don't have to put the caps on either. It's up to you, but I'm going to. At some point, I'll probably lose them. But then after that, then yeah, that'll be the end of doing that. But. <clears throat> For now, we will continue with the caps. So, I guess somehow these are supposed to just bend, kind of open, a little something like that. It's easier to do it without the damn gloves on, but yeah. So, that's pretty much it, guys, on that. Um, just a little multimeter fun, and uh, the test you could say as well. Uh, Multimeter is good, she works. And uh, if you ever have some issues with Big Red again, I'll be able to, be able to figure it out without really having to call my uncle. You know. So, anyways, guys, I'm going to take off. I'm pretty much done for today. I have to make one more video. I might make one more video today. I'll see. But, in other words, that's going to be pretty much it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to probably edit these videos up first. So, anyways, anyways, guys, I'm going to take off. So, I guess uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take her easy.